Welcome everybody to a design examination and kind of tutorial guide for the game Barricades. This is a sponsored piece or the second part of our sponsored look at the game. If you missed the first look that's more for the consumer side, there will be a link to that down below. And if you'd like me to tickle your game as a sponsored piece for the channel, please get in touch. But for this video, we're going to be focusing more on the design of the game, as well as tips on how to actually play it, and kind of what I learned from spending my time with it. I'll be cutting the footage and going back and forth through my uh, pieces here to try and explain everything the best I can. If you have any questions or anything that I missed, let me know in the comments below. But for the design of barricades, as we've talked about, this is essentially split into the kind of finding your resources in the underground layer, as you see here, fighting the zombies, building your various traps, and then crafting the resources and things that you need. And we'll be going over each one of them as we go through this video. But right now, this is footage from base day zero. And the game is set up to give you a basic defense that will survive the first day. Like you don't even need to worry about it. So what I do is just immediately start going down and begin digging. Now, for the resources that you need, you're going to want to focus on finding a bunker that's going to be in this first layer here while collecting wood as well as those little supply crates that you kind of see around. The reason why you want those supply crates is that it allows you to get kind of a random assortment of higher tier goods. Now right now I'm looking at the upgrade system using engrams. And the game gives you the hint that you should focus on upgrading mining abilities first. I don't necessarily agree with that. The reason is that the best way that you're going to be able to kill the enemies is with a trap. And by killing the enemies, you're going to get more Ingrams early. So it's that case of, you know, the early resource is going to help you out a lot more. So right now, as you can see, I'm mining these crates, or I'm harvesting them, and they're giving me just a random assortment of goods. And you're going to find them from beginning to end in the underground portion. Now, with these items, it will allow me to start to construct some of the basic items or the, the basic uh, crafting stations that I'm going to need in order to build up my base. But while I was exploring, I did find the first bunker. And there are multiple bunkers hidden throughout the game and the underground section is randomly generated on new game start. So you, so you won't know exactly where they're located but each one will kind of look the same way using those hard steel and they'll usually carry an arc or kind of a bonus chest. And this chest gave me some very big things including an upgraded forge, a crafting station, and a horizontal excavator. The excavators are very powerful in this game and they're your only means of essentially being able to mine and harvest without you being in the area. And here's the beauty about them. They can mine any rock and any layer that you want regardless of your robot's own level. So what that means is what I'm going to probably be doing in a few minutes is setting this up to mine once I find either a copper or iron supply because at this moment my robot is not leveled enough in terms of mining, I think mining strength is the upgrade or something along those lines to allow me to get that. But this robot certainly can and you can also spend ingrams to build more of them and you may find them in additional arcs. So as you can see right there, I'm setting them up for copper. And copper will be used for constructing coils, as well as some of the upgraded materials or the upgrade research components that I'll need in order to start making something. Now, in the upper layer on our ground floor here, whenever you come up here, you can hit tab, as long as it's not during nightfall, to completely freeze the action or freeze time, allowing you to construct things and not have to worry about them falling or gravity. Now the rules are that 
everything must be connected in order for it to kind of stay in the air. There's no floating islands or floating platforms in barricades. There are essentially two kinds of structures. Those that allow enemies to walk through them, that's the fence that you kind of see stacked up. And then there are things like the sandbag box, um, actual barricades, stone and so on that enemies will either climb over to get through or if they do not have the means to climb they will attack and try to destroy it. Now one of the best things to build it for defense purposes is the barricade itself. Those have the most durability and health out of anything else and you're going to make use of them probably if you want to set up defensive lines. Now one of the early things you want to start looking at is getting forges set up. They're going to be what you're going to use to break down various materials. And the forge level is a very big deal because it affects how fast they will process. And a level 1 versus a level 4 forge is a very big deal. So how you set things up is you have to basically put some kind of fuel in and you can see the fuel along the bottom left there the higher quality fuel will last far longer than the lower quality right now I'm using wood to turn to charcoal but eventually I want to set that up to be coal because that will give me the most bang for my buck now right now I'm trying to figure out how to set up the kind of automation system that the game describes and essentially it works on a layer or on a stacking system. So the uh, crafting or a forge on top of an object will feed the resource that it finishes down into the next one. So this will allow you to set up a chain of, let's say, I'm going to set up a forge to construct charcoal send the charcoal down to the chemistry station to turn into fuel, send the fuel down into our storage so that it works and we basically don't have to worry about it. And that will come to help us later on when we're starting to build multiple traps and such. But early on you're going to want to start looking into investing in ceramics and bricks as they're both going to be used for kind of crafting higher level materials and the ceramics can be used with an upgrade called Wonder Formula to allow you to craft some of the basic materials without needing to harvest uh, some of the lower tier stuff such as iron. So to get ceramics you're going to need to put stone into a forge and then to get bricks it's going to be the sandbags that you get from just mining and just digging around. You'll have tons and tons of them as you keep playing. But with that, I let's talk a little bit more about kind of the trap setup and system of barricades. So we're fast forwarding later on where I've got kind of my base or the basic one set up and we'll talk a little bit about how traps work. Every trap in the game will make use of some kind of fuel. The most common kind is the trap fuel itself and that's constructed by spending any kind of fuel based resource at the chemistry station. But there are traps that can make use of bolts, boulders, etc. So for the first seven days of playing the game, there are no attacks on the right side. You're just focusing on the left. And then day or night seven is kind of when the real challenge begins. Now as you can kind of see I'm preparing some more of my defenses and my inventory is kind of overloaded at the moment. And oh, and you can hear some zombies are starting to come. So this lovely big guy is the butcher and he's your first kind of heavy threat. Now for the most part this is one of those games where you're going to basically hold the line until they'll just go and break through and then there's not much you can do about it. And you're going to be kind of in a constant push to upgrade and keep things going for as long as you can. Every time a trap activates, it will consume fuel and durability, and that's the health bar that you see kind of above the trap at the moment. Now you're going to want to upgrade your traps as early as possible. Level 1 traps are okay, but the level 2 and 3 traps are going to dominate and then there is level 4 but 
that will require a lot more in terms of resources it's kind of the you'll have to get down to levels three or four in the underground to get to it but as you can see the traps are just making mincemeat out of the basic zombies and that guy is going to eventually burn and die and if not my bolts there from that one will do him in as you can see as i'm trying to set things up now the spikes that you begin with are kind of horrible as a defensive measure but when you get them leveled up and especially upgrade them to level three or four they just dominate everything and i found them to be some of my favorites now right now i have things set up again with the crafting that is constructing fuel that is being put into my uh, tank or my trap supply but if we come over here you can see these enemies and that's the second kind of enemy in barricades crawlers they will basically just move over any object that they see to get to their goal and you have to use either a floor or wall based trap or you're going to need to lane them as best as you can basically set up a long twisting maze to eventually stop them and you will have to set up on both the left and right sides eventually specifically by about day 16 is when you're going to be hit by everything coming at you from <laughs> both the left and right so be prepared for that but i am earning a ton of ingrams at the moment and this is going to be successful you basically have to survive until 6 a.m and nobody's reaching the baby by then at this rate now a very underrated upgrade that it may not sound all that important but you want to look into is the repair all feature that it's available under the ingram menu and then activates using v the reason is that as your traps begin to break down during an evasion that you can only repair them when there are no zombies nearby so using v it allows you just to quickly set up repairs on everything that you're going to get and will make things a lot easier for you now with this footage a little bit further ahead you can see kind of how the basic zombies work and i think that i would love to see more of a synergy of being able to use these traps because as you can see i'm trying to do my best to set up like any kind of combination and it's just they're going to constantly move to the right there's no ability to lane kind of the humanoid zombies they'll climb yes but they're going to just keep going from left to right or later right to left and as you can see i'm using the auto repair here to try and get this done as quickly as possible and ideally two maybe three traps set up close proximity will handle most of the basic threats now i probably should have set up more ground-based traps there is a fire upgrade trap that you can get that would help better against these enemies on the right hand side who are just constantly just moving around springs do work and there is an upgrade to improve the spring efficiency but it will eventually run into that problem that you're going to be facing them coming from both sides and you're going to need to set up an adequate line for each but with that said the last thing that I want to comment on before we do a little bit more of a critique of the design is again setting up for long term mining. At this stage in the game, I am in at where you're seeing right now kind of the third or I think, yeah, this is the third tier and there's two more below this one. So I have my excavator set up to mine the higher quality materials while gathering as much coal as I can because I'm going to be using that primarily for uh, my fuel now i've also taken the liberty of setting up multiple tunnels just leading me straight up to the surface to cut down on travel time because there are no other ways of you kind of setting up a fast travel and some of the best days to do that are after a major event that occurs every seven days as you saw that red moon 
So right now I'm just trying to get myself over there. As another a little shortcut you may not know, by pressing Alt, it will show you your location to all your nearby excavators, the baby carriage, and will even show you what resources are being constructed at your crafting stations and your forges. So as you can see, I have a lot of forges set up, and we're trying to set up using titanium, as that is a late game material that's used for upgrading traps. And one thing that I didn't mention, I definitely want to say here, upgrading your traps is big, because it does not raise the cost of the trap or what they use for resources, but improves their durability and the amount of damage they do. As I said earlier, there's a big difference between a level 1 trap of anything and a level 3 trap. And as you can see, I'm trying to take note of what the resources are needed. And that's another little bit of a UI issue that I wish it was, for one thing, that you didn't need to carry items on you for the game to count them. Like if it was just in your, your chest, that would make things a little bit easier and remove some of the... Uh, fumbly or the fiddliness of the UI. But I think we've covered all the basic stuff and the things that you need to get started. So again, to summarize, you want to focus on getting any basic trap out there. One of the ones that you can research using Ingrams. You get your first copy free. Kill the zombies as quickly as possible to get the further Ingrams to upgrade. You should only upgrade kind of your mining power when you come to something that you need. Otherwise, use the excavators that you can find to kind of help you around on that front. When it comes to traps, you want to set up very strong defensive lines. And be aware that you're going to have to make use of springs and laning or setting up long corridors and pathing for the crawlers. And as the game moves forward, it will get harder for you. The zombies will start appearing earlier at night, and you'll get more types to deal with. But with that said, we're going to take a quick break, and then I'm going to talk a little bit more about kind of my in-depth thoughts on the design of Barricades. And now for a quick shout out to our current Game Wisdom supporters and sponsors. Going forward, all Patreon supporters will get early access to our videos. And if you'd like to continue this discussion on game design, be sure to check out our Discord channel, link down below. If you're looking for more wisdom about game design, be sure to check out my latest offering of books, 20 Essential Games to Study, aimed for first-time developers and students looking for some inspiration for their upcoming games, and Game Design Deep Dive Platformers if you're interested in anything regarding 2D and 3D platforming design. They're both available in print, digital, and wherever books are being sold. Alright, so for the back half of our little video here, I want to talk a little bit more about some of the issues and thoughts I have on the design loops of Barricades. So, the footage that you're seeing is just going to be kind of like my final play of the game. It won't be, I think, too much relative to what we're talking about here, but we'll see. As I said in the consumer video that I put out for the game, I like the basic gameplay loop. The three systems of crafting, mining, and combat all work individually, but I feel that the game is missing an additional layer. Something that will either add some more dynamic gameplay to them, or a greater sense of synergy. And what I mean by that is that at the moment, everything is kept very surface level, no pun intended here, in terms of how they interact. You uh, go and mine resources to be used for crafting, to then craft the things you need to build traps. But there's nothing really further beyond that. For instance, with the mining, I can't craft or build anything that's going to exactly make it better or more interesting to mine. Likewise, there's only at the moment three crafting stations, the workbench, the chemistry station, and the forge. That's it. There's nothing else you can really build or construct that changes how you play the game going from early to mid to late game. 
Yes, you are getting better resources, but it's not changing the gameplay loop or the system. I am still spending coal to craft ceramics as I am crafting gold bars. It's the same as if I was crafting iron and other resources. Now, one now in terms of like the UI or UX, I do have some complaints. The first is that I think the game should do a better job of giving you an idea of what to expect on each night. This becomes more and more important when they start kind of splitting up the enemy types between the left and right side. In fact, kind of a general information I think could be done better in this game. For instance, I didn't make use of them, but there are trap doors that activate when enough weight is kind of on top of them, and the game doesn't give you any indication as to how much that is. Likewise, I would like to have seen the recharge time on spring traps just to get an idea of what they are. One of the biggest offenders is the bolt cannon that you saw earlier in this video. The bolts are fired automatically regardless of if there is an enemy in range, ergo it wastes bolts if you try and use that trap anywhere where they're not immediately spawning in. And on this map it was kind of impossible to set up for that. And like I said earlier, I would like to see almost like a sense of dynamic elements for how the traps work. Such as, let's say I could drop a boulder and cause like a spring to proc, or allow myself to do more in terms of properly guiding or moving zombies around. Again, because these enemies only move from one direction to the next, it greatly limits what you're able to do with them. Now, one thing that I did notice is that there does not appear to be late game tech. Now, with that said, I got all the way to the bottom of the bunker, the bottom of the underground section, and there didn't seem to be like anything new or super unlocks or anything along those lines. And maybe that stuff becomes available when you research all the way to the top of the tech tree. Speaking of, from what I've played of this game, I don't think it is actually feasible to fully upgrade your character in a single play. The game is set up that when you fail, you can restart with half the total a number of ingrams that you've accumulated for a play, again allowing you to start a play with more resources and do more. And while that is certainly a good idea, it definitely will allow somebody to eventually just power their way through it, I don't know if there's enough in terms of motivation to want or for a player to restart this game from scratch again and again. Again, because of how limited your interactions are between these three systems, it means that you're going to get into a habit of having the best way of playing. And I eventually got that on this run with setting up my crafting stations, how I want the traps to be, and I don't feel like there's enough motivation to say, Let's all start over again and do all our digging and setting things up. And I think a big thing that would help again is making these traps or making their behavior a little bit more dynamic. You know, setting up for some like Home Alone style shenanigans. Or even some just like greater synergy with how traps work. For instance, we have this fire pit that you see on the ground there. What if I could put an oil trap down that slows them down, and then they step into the fire, they take an increased amount of damage? Or maybe a trap that can push the enemies, or here's an example, let's say there's a spike wall trap, and it does bonus damage based on the velocity of the zombies when they hit it. So I could sell like a spring wall or a spring floor, launch the zombies into the trap, and let it do more and more damage. Because as it stands right now, once you've got a solution that works, you're not really going to need to change it unless the game throws a curveball at you, like it did for me on day, I think it was 15 or 16, where I got completely trounced. 
And part of that was because it was hard to kind of figure out what the behavior of the zombies would be. And maybe having some kind of a zombie path guide or pathing guide would help. Especially if you're trying to set up for more advanced uh, situations. Again, the game wants you kind of set up two distinct uh, trap setups. One for the enemies that are going to walk from one direction to the next. One for the crawler enemies that you see here. And being able to kind of see at a glance, okay, where are they going to go based on my setup would help out a lot. And it'll kind of cut down on this idea of, you know, learn by failure and learn by restarting. Which I don't know, again, if this game is set up enough in terms of its design to warrant that kind of replayability. With that said, we are going to wrap up this look here. I would like to, again, thank the developers for giving me a press key to check this one out and to do or were willing to let me do a sponsored piece on it. If you'd like me to tickle your game in the future, please don't hesitate to get in touch. And we'll probably play some of Barricades on stream that now that my, I guess, quote unquote work play of it is finished. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And again, if you'd like to check out the more later, I guess, review of it, you'll find that in the description as well as the store page for the game. Please keep in mind that what you're seeing is from its early access and may not represent the current version of it as well. But again, from a gameplay perspective, everything that we see, I think, is representative of what's going to be in the full game. Thank you again for watching, and come back for daily discussions on game design here, and on game wisdom, where some of the are in science of games. Until next time, take care. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoy things, be sure to do all the liking and subscribing that the kids are doing these days. Check out our Discord channel link down below where we hang out and chat game design, and come back later tonight for our regular streamings. But that's it. And tune in for more great content here and on Game Wisdom, where we examine the art and science of games.